All praise to the most high God. So tonight's topic is called wisdom in our time. Wisdom in our time. Let's open up with the book of Isaiah 33 verse 6. The book of Isaiah chapter 33 verse 6. Let's start there. Isaiah chapter 33 verse 6. Come on. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times mm -hmm. and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Read verse 6 again. Isaiah chapter 33 verse 6. Come on. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. So now the and Lord is saying wisdom. Hold on. Wisdom and knowledge shall be, shall be the stability of our times. Not politics, not religion, you understand? Not jollering, not homemongering, no. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times. Which times? These last days. You understand? Come on. And strength and salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. And strength of salvation. Strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Now, wisdom is how we are going to survive in this earth in these last days. You understand? That's why Isaiah in the spirit of Christ is teaching us that wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times. You understand? And the times is talking about the times that we are living, the times that we are living in right now. Wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of our times. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Malachi 2 verse 7. Let's understand what is this knowledge. Okay, I'm going to deal with wisdom in a second. Give me Malachi 2 verse 7. Malachi 2 verse 7. It says, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our time. Watch this. Read that. Malachi 2 verse 7. Malachi chapter 2 verse 7. Come on. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. Mm -hmm. And they should seek the law at his mouth. Come on. For he is, for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. So now the knowledge is the laws of God. You understand? The knowledge is the laws of God. God's commandments is what's going to be the stability of our times. Go back to where was it? Isaiah 33 verse 6. Isaiah chapter 33 verse 6. Read. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. Mm -hmm. And strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. The fear of the Lord, that's your treasure. The fear of the Lord, that's your treasure right there. Watch this. It says, and strength of salvation, the fear of the Lord is his treasure. Is his treasure. Now watch this. He says, the fear of the Lord is going to be your treasure. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in, give me that in Proverbs. Give me Proverbs chapter 2. Start verse 1. Proverbs 2 verse 1. The fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord is his treasure. So the fear of the Lord is your treasure this day. Watch this. So give me Proverbs chapter 2 verse 1. Let's start there. The book of Proverbs chapter 2 verse 1. Come on. My son, if thou wilt receive my words mm -hmm. and hide my commandments with thee, he says, if you saw, he says, if thou shalt receive, thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandment with thee. So the, the word is the commandments. Go ahead. So that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom mm -hmm. and apply thine heart to understanding. You see that thing? So now you must incline your ear unto wisdom. That's why it says wisdom and knowledge is the shall be the stability of thy time the times that we're living in. So you must incline your ear to the wisdom of the Most High God. You must open your ears to that. Your ears must not be open to things that you know they are not profitable for you. Go ahead. Yea, if thou Christ of the knowledge mm -hmm. and lifted up thy voice for understanding. Now that's heavy right there. It says now as yea, if thou criest after knowledge, you must cry after knowledge. Because today our people, they are crying after knowledge that is destructive for them. You ever see a child when he's crying? He's crying for food. You know, a newborn baby, when they are hungry, they cry. You understand? When they are thirsty, they cry. When they want to sleep, they cry. So when they cry, the mother will hear them. The parent will hear the child crying. Likewise, when we cry after knowledge, the most High God will hear our, pray, our cry. And when he hear our cry, because we are crying after knowledge. We're not crying after the things of the world. We are crying after his knowledge. Then the Lord is going to hear our cry. 
Understand that. Read that again. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 3. Go ahead. Yea, if thou criest of the knowledge mm -hmm. and liftest up thy voice for understanding. You see that thing? It says you must cry after knowledge and lift up your voice for understanding. So that's why I tell you, brothers and sisters, too, you must ask questions. You must study and ask questions. Why? Because you must cry after knowledge. The which knowledge? The knowledge of the most high. You understand? It says, and lift up thy voice for understanding. To understand what the Lord is saying. Read. If thou seekest her as silver, mm -hmm. and searchest for her as for hid treasures. You see that thing? It says, you must seek you must seek the knowledge and wisdom of the Lord as silver, and you must search for her as for hid treasure. Because this Bible is not revealed to everybody. You understand? That's why it says, is hid treasure. It's hidden. That means you must search for it. That means you must search the scriptures daily to see whether these things are true. Where are these things, where, where, what are these brothers talking about? Let me open my Bible and see what they are talking about. You understand? Read. Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord mm -hmm. and find the knowledge of God. You see that thing? It says, when you seek after this knowledge, like a silver, you understand? And what? And searches for as for hidden treasures. It says, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find knowledge of the Lord. You, you have to seek for the laws of God. You have to seek for the knowledge of the Most High God so you can understand the fear of the Lord. There is now people today, they don't fear the Lord. They don't understand the judgment that comes from breaking God's commandments. Guess what? It's because they don't search the scriptures. You understand? You cannot be watching TV all day thinking you're going to understand the laws of God. You cannot be gallivanting the street thinking you're going to understand the, the fear of the Lord. Facebook all day, YouTube all day, thinking you will understand the fear. Of, you will not understand the fear of the Lord. Therefore, you're not going to have fear. Therefore, you will not have understanding. You see that thing? Go ahead. Verse 6. For the Lord giveth wisdom. Mm -hmm. out, of his, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. You see that thing? For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Now that's the part we want to deal with. He says, for the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. The mouth of the Lord is this Bible. This is the mouth of the Lord right here. The Bible. Now go back to where he was at now. Isaiah 33 verse 6. Isaiah chapter 33 verse 6. Read. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. Come on. And strength of salvation. Mm -hmm. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. You see that thing? The wisdom and knowledge of the Lord, that is the strength of our salvation. That's how we are going to get delivered. It says the fear of the Lord is his treasure. I want to deal with the wisdom. Give me that in 1 Corinthians 1.24. It says, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. Okay? Wisdom. Let's deal with that. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24. Mm -hmm. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God, now, that's heavy right there. Read that again, verse 24. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24. Read. But unto them that are called, mm. both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. So now Christ is the power of the Most High God, and he is the wisdom of God. Christ is the wisdom of the Most High God. So let's go back to Isaiah 33, so we can understand what Isaiah is saying to us. Okay, it says wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times, the time, these last days, you understand, the end times. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of these last days. Watch this. Isaiah 33 verse 6, read that. Isaiah chapter 33 verse 6. Go ahead. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. Come on. And, and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. So it says wisdom and knowledge. We understand what the knowledge is. Now we understand is this wisdom is actually Christ, is the spirit of Christ. This wisdom right here is the spirit of Christ. Christ is the wisdom of God. So Christ is going to be our what? He's going to be our foundation. 
Christ is how we are going to be what? This is Christ is how we are going to be established on this earth as a power on earth. You understand? That's why it says, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time. You understand? The definition of the word stable. Let's get there. The definition of the word stable. Watch this. Okay, so we can understand what the Lord is teaching us. Okay. Okay, let me share my screen. Hold on a second. Okay, read the definition of the word stability from Miriam Webster. Read that. The definition of stability, noun. The quality, state, or degree of being stable. Mm -hmm. You see that thing? The quality, state, or degree of being stable. That means you have a good foundation. So wisdom is how we are going to be what? That wisdom is our foundation. Wisdom is how we are going to be stable as a nation. Wisdom is going to stabilize, it's going to rebuild us as a nation. So in order for you to build a nation, you must have a strong foundation. That strong foundation is who? Christ, the spirit of Christ. Okay, read that definition again. The definition of stability. Mm -hmm. The quality, state, or degree of being stable. Come on, read the read uh, the next definition. A. Such as the strength to stand or endure. Mm -hmm. Firmness. You see that thing right there? The strength to stand or endure. Firmness. So, because when you look at our people in the world, our people, don't, they don't have anything they are leaning upon. And whatever they are leaning upon is not beneficial for them. Whatever they are leaning upon is not is not beneficial for them and is destructive to them. You understand? It's not for any benefit. So that's why our people today, they are wandering up and down, morning from pillar to post, mountain to hill, because they are looking for what? They are looking for stability. But the stability of our time is going to be the spirit of Christ in these last days. You understand? Read that naked, the one A. Read one A again. The definition of stability. Mm -hmm. such as the strength to stand or endure come on firmness 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 okay now let's go back to the scripts go back to the scripts Isaiah 33 verse 6 again Isaiah chapter 33 verse 6 come on and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times Mm -hmm. and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. You see what he's saying? It says wisdom and knowledge. Wisdom and knowledge. Not politics and religion and democracy. No. Wisdom and knowledge is how we are going to be stable as a nation. Is how we are going to be established as a nation. Is how we are going to be a powerhouse on this earth. Because what? Because of what? Wisdom and knowledge of the Most High God. Watch this. Give me First Peter 1. First Peter 1 verse 11. Okay. First Peter chapter 1 verse 11. And the reason why, the reason how we are going to be established on this earth, how we are going to be a powerhouse on this earth, how we are going to get our honor back on this earth among all these nations, guess what? The spirit of Christ, which is the spirit of wisdom, will be working through the men and women that the Lord is going to wake up in these last days. And they will believe on Christ. Read that. First Peter 1. Verse 11. Come on. First Peter chapter 1, verse 11. Read. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify. The what? When the Spirit of the Spirit of Christ, mm -hmm. which was in them, did signify. The Spirit of Christ. The Spirit of Christ which was in them. The Spirit of Christ which was in them. So the spirit of Christ, that's the wisdom that is going to be the stability of our times. Which times? The times that we're in right now. The end times. Even in the times of the end. You understand? Guess what? The spirit of Christ is what's going to be our what? Our foundation. Is what's going to be our stabilizing factor in building this great nation of the 12 tribes of Israel. Read that again. Verse 11. 
First Peter chapter 1, verse 11. Read. Searching what, or what manner of time, the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify. Mm -hmm. When it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Because guess what? Before, when before Christ came, our forefathers, they, they prophesied about Christ coming and that Christ is going to die for the 12 tribes of Israel. That happened. Now it says what? It says they, they testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ, not only that, and the glory that should follow. Guess what we are doing now? We are prophesying the glory that should follow, which is what? The kingdom of heaven that will be established upon this earth. Right now, we are ushering in the kingdom. That's what we are doing right now. You understand? So now, go back. Go back to Isaiah 33, verse 6 again. Isaiah chapter 33, verse 6. Read. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times mm. and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. So the Lord is teaching us that, listen, in these times that you are in, give me the book of Daniel. Give me Daniel 12. Give me Daniel chapter 12. Read verse 4. Daniel chapter 12, verse 4. You know, start at verse 3, Daniel 12. The book of Daniel, chapter 12, verse 3. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. Mm. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars of as the stars forever and ever. You see what the Lord is saying? It says, They that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. Who is the wise? Give me that in Psalms 19, verse 7. They that be wise, it says, shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. Because when you look at the firmament, you see the stars, they are shining. It's beautiful up there. Okay? Read that. Psalms 19, verse 7. Psalms chapter 19, verse 7. Come on. The law of the Lord is perfect, mm -hmm. converting the soul. Read. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. But that means they that keep the commandments. Now we understand, it says, the laws of God is going to make the simple ones to be wise. So go back to Daniel 12, verse 3 again. Daniel chapter 12, verse 3. Mm -hmm. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. Stop right there. It says, they that be wise, that means they that keep the commandments shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. That's what that means. Go ahead. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. They that turn many to righteousness, you understand, as the stars forever and ever. Give me the book of Luke chapter 1 verse 15. Okay, Luke 1 verse 15. Luke chapter 1 verse 15. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. You know what? And he's... Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Let me see, let me see. Yeah, started, uh, started verse... Let me see. Yeah, verse... verse yeah, read, yeah, read, read. Mm, read 15 and 16, because I want 16, actually. Read 15 and 16, not part of my notes. Just popped into my head. Uh, read 15 and 16 together. Luke chapter 1, verse 15. Go ahead. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord uh -huh. and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. Read. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. even from his mother's womb. Now, this is talking about who? This is talking about John the Baptist. This is because John the Baptist was a Nazarite. Okay, come on, watch this. Read. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. You see that thing? And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. Who is this talking about? It's talking about John the Baptist, right? Now, keep reading. Read verse 17. Watch this. Verse 17. Mm -hmm. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. He shall what? And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. So what is, what is Luke telling us here? He's telling us John the Baptist is Elijah. Go ahead. To turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. Read. 
and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. Come on. To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. You see that thing? He will do what? He will prepare the people for the second coming of Christ. Luke is prophesying. You understand? He's quoting Malachi. Give me Malachi now, chapter 4, verse 4. Malachi 4, verse 4. Watch this. Malachi chapter 4, verse 4. Read what you got. Come on, come on. Malachi chapter 4, verse 4. Read. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, mm -hmm. which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel. Read. With the statutes and judgments. Read. Come on. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet mm. before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. You see what he's saying? He says, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the dreadful, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So Malachi is not prophesying, uh, he's not talking about during the time of Rome, because that was not the, the, the dreadful day of the Lord. It wasn't the dreadful day of the Lord. Christ was born in slavery when the Romans was ruling. You understand? So he's not talking about that. He's talking about these last days. He's talking about these last days. That's what Luke is talking about. Luke is talking about that thing. Go back to Luke now, chapter 1, verse 17. Luke chapter, you know, keep reading Malachi. Read verse 6. Let's finish that off. Verse 6. Mm -hmm. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. Read. And the heart of the children to their fathers. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Before judgment of the Lord comes upon this earth. Guess what? Guess what Elijah would do in these last days? Elijah will turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children back to their forefathers. Now we are, we are going back to the heart of our forefathers, which is this Bible. You understand? Go back to Luke now. Chapter 1, verse 17. Read that. Luke, chapter 1, verse 17. Come on. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. Read. To turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. Stop right there. To make it's a, hold on. And the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. The disobedient is our people that don't keep God's commandments. You understand? The disobedient will be turned to the wisdom of the just. Who's the just? Give me that in um, Ezekiel 18 verse 4. Okay, Ezekiel. Give me that in Ezekiel chapter 18. Watch this. Read verse 5, actually. That's what I want. Ezekiel 18 verse 5. Come on. Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 5. Mm -hmm. But if a man be just and do that which is lawful and right. You see that thing? If, but if a man be just and do that which is lawful and right. So if you are just, it means you are doing that which is lawful and right according to the commandments of the Most High. So go back to where he was at. Okay. Luke chapter 1, verse 17. Luke chapter 1, verse 17. Read. Right. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias mm -hmm. to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children. Come on. And the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. The disobedient will be turned to the wisdom, will, will tend to the wisdom of the just. Who's the just? Those that are doing that which is lawful and right. The teachers, the leaders that the Lord will set up in these last days to turn the heart of the fathers to the children. What does that mean? We will be walking after the footsteps of Elijah. You understand? That's what this is talking about. Go ahead. To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. That's what we're doing right now. We're preparing our people for the second coming of Christ. You understand? So they can do that which is lawful and right before the second coming of the Messiah. So go back to where he was at now. Daniel 12 verse 3. Read that. Daniel chapter 12 verse 3. Come on. And they that be wise shall mm. shine as the brightness of the firmament. Come on. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars of it, as the stars forever and ever. You see that thing? And they that turn many to righteous. Who's the many? Many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord. Elijah did it when he came in these last days to wake us up that we're Israel. Guess what? We also walking after the footsteps of our forefather, Elijah. 
who are doing the same thing, who are attaining many to righteousness, the Lord says we shall be as the stars forever and ever. You understand? We're going to be what? We're going to have the spirit of Christ, which is the spirit of wisdom, which will stabilize, which will stabilize, stabilize us now before the Lord returns and it will establish us where after the Lord is come on this earth and we are ruling the earth. The wisdom of Christ is, gonna, is, is establishing us right now. And then when the Lord returns, we are going to be fully established. You understand? To be the power of the earth and to teach the nations the laws of God. Next verse. Come on. Verse 4. Mm -hmm. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book. And do what? Even and seal the book. It says, but thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book. Meaning close the understanding of the book. Come on. Even to the time of the end. Even to the time of the end. But in these last days, the Lord will open the seals on the book. The Lord will open the seals on the book. We're going to understand what this Bible is saying in these last days. It's not going to be sealed to the elect. Read on. Come on. Even to the time of the end. Even to the what? Even to the time of the end. Even to the time of the end, meaning in the end times, the, the Lord will open the seals on this Bible. The understanding will be open to us as we keep his commandments. That's why it says, go back to Isaiah. We go, we're coming back here to Daniel. Isaiah 33 verse 6 again. Isaiah chapter 33 verse 6. Read. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. Mm-hmm. And strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. So wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of our times. Guess what? In these last days, even to the end, the, the time of the end, that's what Isaiah is talking about. That's what Daniel is talking about. Go back to Daniel 12 verse 4. Daniel chapter 12 verse 4. Read. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book mm -hmm. even to the time of the end. Even to the time of the end, because in the time of the end, this Bible will be open to us. Give me that in Revelation 5. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 1. Revelation chapter 5 verse 1. Come on. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne, a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. So these seals is talking about what? It's talking about the understanding. The understanding, it says this book was sealed with seven seals. Read on. The book is the Bible. You understand? The book is the Bible that is written within and without. On the front and on the back. Give me that in uh, Ezekiel. Give me Ezekiel. Give me Ezekiel chapter 2. Ezekiel 2 verse 1. Read that. Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 1. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. Mm -hmm. And the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me, and set me upon my feet, that I heard him that spake unto me. He says, I heard him that spake unto me. Watch this. Uh, jump down to verse 6. Verse 6. And thou, son of man, no, 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 be no, no, not no. afraid. You know what? Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. Give me, um, read Ezekiel 3 verse 1. Read Ezekiel 3 verse 1. Jump down to chapter 3 now. Read verse, uh, chapter 2 verse 1 first. 2 verse 1 and 2, then we're going to jump to chapter 3 verse 1 down. Read that. Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 1. Read. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. So now he's saying, stand, he said, well, stand upon thy feet and I will speak unto thee. Give me that in 2 Ezra 10 verse 33, because the same thing that was told to Ezra is the same thing that is told to Ezekiel is the same thing that was, tell, was told to our forefather Ezra. 
Okay, second Ezra 10, verse 33. Watch this. Come on. Second Ezra chapter 10, verse 33. Read. And he said unto me, stand up manfully, and I will advise thee. You see that thing right there? It says, stand up manfully, and I will advise thee. The most High God wants you to grow some bolitos so that he can advise you. You see that thing right there? Go ahead. Verse 34, come on. Verse 34. Read. Then said I, mm -hmm. speak on my Lord. Speak on my Lord. Read. In me, only forsake me not, lest I, first, lest I die frustrate of my hope. Okay, come on. Now go back to Ezekiel 2 now. Read Ezekiel 2 verse 2. Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2. Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2. Mm -hmm. And the spirit entered into me when, I, when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet that I heard him that spake unto me. You see what he's saying? He says, and the spirit entered in me, into me when, I, when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet that I hear him that spake unto me. The most high God wants us, wants the man to stand up manfully. You understand? That's the only time when the most high God will be able to advise us when it comes to these laws, statutes, and commandments. Now give me Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 1. Ezekiel 3, verse 1. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest, eat this roll. And go speak unto the house of Israel. You see what he's saying? So Daniel was told, he says, seal the book even to the time of the end. But the, in the time of the end, in these last days, because the, 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 the seal, the understanding must be open to us. You understand? So that the wisdom and knowledge that is in this book will be able to be the stability of our times. You understand? So Christ will be the one that will open the seals on the book so we can understand what this Bible is saying. You understand? So now Ezekiel is being told, listen, eat, eat the roll and go and speak to the house of Israel. The only way he can eat it, he must understand it. And the only way for him to understand it, the Lord must open that understanding to him. Just like he's opening the understanding to us this day. Ray. So I opened my mouth mm -hmm. and he caused me to eat that roll. Meaning I learned what was written in this book. Come on. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat mm -hmm. and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. You see that thing? It says, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. Go ahead. And he said unto me, Son of man, go, get thee unto the house of Israel and speak with my words unto them. And speak with my words unto them, because the understanding would be would be open unto him. So the roll is the book that had seven seals, which is the Bible that Daniel was told seal the book even unto the time of the end, because in the time of the end the Lord will open the seals and will have understanding. Go back to Revelation five now, verse one again. Revelation chapter five, verse one. Mm -hmm. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book, writ a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. Read. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? You see that thing? It says this angel was speaking with a loud voice saying, who is worthy to open the book? And to lose the seals thereof, to open up the understanding, right? And no man in heaven, mm. nor in earth, Ray. neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. You see that thing? It says, neither nobody in heaven and in earth, no man, no man, neither under the under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon, to even understand if you were to open the book. The understanding thereof, because that's what this is talking about. Read. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, mm -hmm. neither to look thereon. He says nobody was worthy to, to read and to open the book and to read the book, 
neither to look the wall. Read. And one of the, el the elders said unto me, mm -hmm. Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah. That's right. The root. The what? The lion of the tribe of Judah. The lion of the tribe of Judah. That's right. Go ahead. The root of David mm -hmm. had prevailed to open the book. Come on. And to loose the seven seals thereof. You see that thing? Christ, he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the only one that prevailed to open the book and to lose the seals thereof. Now go back to Daniel 12, verse 4 now. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 4. Daniel chapter 12, verse 4. Come on. But thou, o Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Even to the time of the end, but in the end times, for the wisdom and the knowledge that's written in this book to be the stability of our times, the Christ, the lion of the tribe of Judah, must open the book, the understanding of this book, so we can be able to understand how to move in these last days, how to build our families, how to build up the men, how to teach our sons and our daughters, how to what, how to be men, how to be husbands, how to be fathers, wives. You understand? Women, daughters of Zion. You understand? So that's what the Lord is saying to us in these last days, that he will open the book to us. The proof of that is Elijah came and left. Now we understand what this Bible is saying. You understand? So the Bible is a true book. Go ahead. Many shall run to and fro, mm -hmm. and knowledge shall be increased. It says many shall run to and fro, meaning many are going to run from one place to another trying to look for the understanding of this book. Give me that in Habakkuk chapter 2. Give me Habakkuk 2 and 2. Habakkuk says many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased. The knowledge is not talking, it's talking about the science of Esau. Esau's witchcraft that he calls science. Habakkuk 2 verse 2. Watch this. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2. Come on. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision mm -hmm. and make it plain upon tables. Come on. That he may run that readeth it. You see that thing? It says, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables. Give me Isaiah 30, verse 8. Write the vision and make it plain. Make it plain. Make it plain upon tables. What is the tables? Give me that in Isaiah 30, verse 8. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 8. Go ahead. Now go, write it before them in a table. In a what? And write it before them in a table. Write it before them. Who's the them? The children of Israel. Write it before them in a table. Come on. And note it in a book. The book is the table, which is the Bible. Go ahead. That it may be for the time to come. Forever and ever. That time to come is the time that we're living in right now. That it may be for the time to come. Which times? The last days. You understand? That's why it says wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. Which times? The time to come, which is now. The time that we're living in. That's what he's talking about. Now go back to Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2. Now we understand what the table is. The table is the Bible. Okay. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2. Read. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2. Come on. And the Lord answered me and said, mm -hmm. Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. That he may run that readeth it. What, is that, what does that mean? He's saying the same thing that Daniel is saying, that many shall run to and fro, that he may run that readeth what? The Bible. Watch this. Give me that in Amos chapter 8, verse 12. Amos. Chapter 8 and verse 12. Amos chapter 8 verse 12. Read. And they shall wander from sea to sea. Mm -hmm. And from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro. To seek the word of the Lord. And shall not find it. You see that thing right there? It says they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord. And shall not find it. Why? Because this Bible is not open to everybody. 
This Bible is not open to everybody. You understand? That's why many of our people, they read this book, but they don't understand what it's saying. Why? Because they don't want to do the things that the Bible says do. You understand? They don't want to apply what is written. They don't want to keep the Sabbath. They are buying and selling and cooking, working on the Sabbath day, but yet they still think they want to understand. They think they, in their minds, they believe they, they believe that they understand what the Bible is saying. They don't understand it. You understand? They don't. The Most High God has smitten them with a strong delusion. They believe lies. And the Lord says they're going to live in the lies that they tell themselves on a daily basis. Why? Because they don't want, they don't want to receive the love of the truth. Go back to Daniel now, chapter 12, verse 4. Daniel chapter 12, verse 4. Read. But thou, O Daniel, mm -hmm. shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Come on. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Many shall run to and fro trying to get the understanding of this book. And we read in Amos, it says, they shall not find it because it's not open to everybody. That's why when we go to the streets and teach our people, it doesn't matter wherever we go in the country. We go to different places to teach the gospel. Some will receive it. Some do not want to receive it. It's like it's just fairy tale to them. You understand? They don't get it. It's just told so far-fetched. That's how they see it. Because the Most High God has not opened their, their understanding to them. You understand? So go back to Isaiah 33 verse 6. Now we have a better understanding what Isaiah is saying right here. When he says, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times. We what you got. Come on. Isaiah chapter 33 verse 6. Read. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. Mm -hmm. And strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. You see that thing? Wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of thy times. Our times. Which times? The last days. The end of times, which is where we are right now, in the last days. Wisdom is what's going to sustain us. Wisdom is what's going to stabilize us as a nation. You understand? Wisdom is what is going to rebuild our desolate estate, our low estate, our decayed estate. Wisdom and knowledge is what's going to rebuild us back up to be that glory of the earth. That's what Isaiah is teaching us right here. So we have to hold on to this book in these last days. You understand? Don't let it go. You must leave unto this book. Give me that in Isaiah 34, verse 16. Isaiah 34, verse 16. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16. Read. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord mm -hmm. and read. No one of these shall fail. None mm -hmm. shall want her mate. You see that thing? It says, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. The prophecies that are written in this Bible, the Bible, is, the Lord is teaching us that none of them is going to fail. None of them. That says, no one of these shall fail. That's a fact. Okay, come on. None shall want her mate. Mm -hmm. For my mouth it hath commanded. Read. And his spirit it had gathered them. The spirit of the Lord has gathered the words that are written in this book. Keep going. Verse 17. Watch this. Verse 17. Mm -hmm. And he hath cast the lot for them, and his hand hath divided it unto them by line. You see that thing? This. It says, and hold on. It says, he hath cast the lot for them. Give me the book of Colossians chapter 1. Give me Colossians chapter 1. Let me see. Let me see. Colossians chapter 1. Read verse 20. Start at verse 19. Colossians chapter 1. The book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 19. Go ahead. For it pleased the Father that mm -hmm. in him should all fullness dwell. In him. The him is talking about Christ. Read. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, mm -hmm. by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. So now, read that again, verse 20. Read verse 20 again. Colossians chapter 1, verse 20. Mm -hmm. And having made peace 
through the blood of his cross. Stop right there. And having made peace through the blood of his cross. Because there was no peace between us and the Father. Christ was our peace. You understand? He was our peace. So now it says, having made peace through the blood of his cross. That's when the Lord, he cast the Lord for us. What was the Lord Christ dying on the cross for us? That was his Lord for us to be reconciled back to the Father. You understand? Read. By him to reconcile all things unto himself. To do what? To reconcile all things unto himself. To reconcile all things unto himself. To reconcile all things unto himself. Give me the book of Ezekiel, okay? 44 verse 17. Ezekiel 44 verse 17. To reconcile all things unto himself. Ezekiel chapter 44 verse 17. Read. And it shall come to pass that when they enter in at the gates of the inner court. No, no. Uh, wait, 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 wait. No, no. Verse four, chapter 45 verse 17. Not 44. 45. Read that. Ezekiel chapter 45 verse 17. Go ahead. And it shall be the printer's pot mm. to give burnt offerings and meat offerings and drink offerings in the feasts and in the new moons and in the Sabbaths in all solemnities of the house of Israel. Read. He shall prepare the sin offering and the meat offering and the burnt offering and the peace offerings to make reconciliation for the house of Israel. You see that thing? So everything that Ezekiel is explaining here, it goes into the law of animal sacrifice. You understand? So all these sacrifices that we was doing, the drink offerings, the burnt offerings, the meat offerings, you understand? In the feast, in the new moons, and in the Sabbath, and in all the solemnities of the house of Israel, Christ did that when he died on the cross for us. To do what? To what? To make reconciliation for the house of Israel. To reconcile us back to the Father. Christ did that thing when he became that ultimate sacrifice. You understand? Go back to Colossians 1, verse 20. Colossians chapter 1, verse 20. Read. And having made peace through the blood of his cross. Mm -hmm. By him to reconcile all things unto himself. The all things that he reconciled unto himself, that's when he what? He reconciled, he made reconciliation by the blood of his cross for the house of Israel. Read. By him I say, mm -hmm. whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Because that's what, that's what Christ did. That was our Lord. That was his Lord for us. Go back to Isaiah now. Isaiah 34 verse 17. Isaiah chapter 34 verse 17. Come on. And he hath cast the lots for them. Mm -hmm. That's when and Christ his... died. That's when he died on the cross. That's when the Lord, the most high God, he cast the lot for us by allowing his son to die for his nation. Read. And, and he hath cast the lot for them. Mm -hmm. And his hand hath divided it Unto them by line. Stop right there. It says, and what? And his hand had divided it unto them by line. What's the it that he divided to us by line? The Bible. The Bible. He divided the Bible to us by line. Give me that in Isaiah 28. Okay. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 10. Read that. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 10. Come on. For precept must be upon precept, mm -hmm. precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. That's how he divided it unto us by line. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. That's how it's going to be what? That's how this Bible will be the stability of our times. Because the Lord is going to, not only will he give this Bible, not only will he give his, his son as an ultimate sacrifice for us, not only that, but he will also give this Bible to us and he, he will divide it to us by line, precept upon precept. Because Christ's sacrifice 
guess what? Christ's sacrifice also gave us access to understand what this Bible is saying. His sacrifice was also the gateway for us to understand this. Watch this. Give me that in John 14, verse 6. Okay? John chapter 14, verse 6. John chapter 14, verse 6. Read. Jesus said unto him, mm. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You see what he's saying right there? It says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I'm going to give you the way to get to the Father. I'm going to give you the truth to understand how to get to the Father. And I'm going to give you eternal life. You understand? Meaning the sacrifice that he's going to make, he's going to give us the way to the Father. And we will understand what this Bible is saying. And we'll receive the kingdom and eternal life. That's what he's saying right there. Read that again, verse 6. John chapter 14, verse 6. Read. Jesus said unto him, mm -hmm. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Watch this. Give me Psalms 86, verse 11. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times. Okay. Read that. Psalms 86, verse 11. Psalms chapter 86, verse 11. Mm hmm. Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. Mm -hmm. Unite my heart to fear thy name. You see what he's saying? He says, teach me thy way, o, thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. So the way is the truth also. That's what he's saying. Unite my heart to fear thy name. So when he says, I am the way, the truth. I am the way, the truth. So he's saying the same thing. I am the way and the truth. The truth is the way. Watch this. Give me that in Psalms 119, verse 142. You know what I want? Get me that thing. Okay. Psalms chapter 119, verse 142. Go ahead. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, mm -hmm. and thy law is the truth. Thy law is the truth. Thy law is the truth. So go back to John 14, verse 6. John chapter 14, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Come on. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. He is the way, you understand, and he is the truth. He going to teach the truth, because guess what? He is the way, and he's going to give us freedom. Give me John 8, 32, because he says he is the way and the truth. You understand? The truth is the law. This law is going to give us deliverance when we apply it. John 8, 32. Read that. John chapter 8, verse 32. Go ahead. And ye shall know the truth, mm -hmm. and the truth shall make you free. You see that thing right there? So Christ is telling us, listen, I am the way. The truth. So I'm also going to give you freedom from this captivity. That's what he's saying to us right there. Go back to John 14, verse 6. John chapter 14, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And the what? And the life. And the life. Revelation 22, 14. I am the way, the truth, and the life. So the Christ is telling us this is the way you should go. What way is that? The commandments. There's no any other way to get to the Father. You know, there's no any other way to be delivered from captivity. There's no any other way to live forever on this earth but by him. What does he mean? Because he made that, he was the sacrifice. So you cannot go around Christ. Impossible. You can't go around Christ. You have to go through him first. You understand? Read that. Revelation 22, 14. Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. Go ahead. Blessed are they that do his commandments, mm -hmm. that they may have right to the tree of life. Come on. And may enter in through the gate into the city. You see that thing? That they may have right to the tree of life. Immortality. Immortality. And get into the kingdom. So go back to John 14, verse 6. 
John chapter 14, verse 6. Mm. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Come on. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. Now go back to Isaiah now. Isaiah 34, verse 17 again. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 17. Mm -hmm. And he has cast the lost for them. And he hath cast the lot for them. And his hand hath divided it unto them by line. You see that thing? His hand. His hand. Remember, in Revelation 5, it says he opened the seal. He is the one that was worthy enough to open the seal and to read it and to look thereupon. Yeah, to look thereon. So now it says he hath divided it. You know, his, his, his hand hath divided it unto them by line. Precept upon precept. So Christ's sacrifice also gave us access to understand how this Bible is supposed to be read. The mysteries, the basics, the mysteries, the prophecies that are written in this book. To do what? So that we can have a foundation, so we can have a, a, ref, we can have a, a, a way to escape all the oppression that we're experiencing on this earth. The Lord is, is you said, he's promising us, he will give us hope in the last days. And the Bible is our rest. This is where we rest our spirit. Our spirit must rest in this Bible. That's how we're going to be stable in the last days. That's how we're going to be established in the last days. You understand? You're not going to be shaken or moved because you understand what's going on. Okay? Ray? They shall possess it forever. Mm -hmm. From generation to generation shall they dwell therein. You see that thing? It says they shall possess it forever. We're going to possess it forever. Even today in these last days, we will still have the books with us. Guess what? We have the books with us. Okay? From generation to generation shall they dwell therein. We're going to dwell in this Bible. We are going not go, our, our names are not going to be taken out. Because we are born Israel, your name is already written in the book. You are blessed of the Lord. You understand? Now go back to Isaiah 33 now, verse 6. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times, mm -hmm. and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Keep reading, verse 7. Watch this. Verse 7. Behold, the valiant ones shall cry without. Mm -hmm. The ambassadors of peace shall weep bitterly. You see, that's us. It says, behold, the valiant ones shall cry without. Meaning what? Outside. Give me that in Proverbs 1. Okay, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 22. It says what? It says, behold, the valiant ones shall cry without. Because wisdom and knowledge is what's going to is what's going to is what's going to restore us back to honor as a nation. Is what's going to restore us from our decayed estate. Read that. Proverbs, Proverbs one. chapter one. Proverbs chapter one, verse twenty-two. Read. Proverbs chapter one, verse twenty-two. Read. How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Keep going. Turn you at my reproof. You know Behold. What? Start at verse 20. Start, start above it. Uh, let's start above it. Start at verse 20. Yes, sir. Come Proverbs on. 1 verse 20. Mm -hmm. Wisdom cried without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. You see that thing? It says, wisdom crieth without. Remember, it says, they are valiant, they are valiant ones, meaning what? The valiant men, valiant men of war. They're going to go out to the streets. They will cry without. You understand? So wisdom crieth without. Wisdom. The spirit of Christ, which was in the prophets, the spirit of Christ, which is in the prophets, is going to what? Cause these men to go out to teach the gospel of peace. You understand? Read that again, verse 20. Proverbs 1, verse 20. Mm -hmm. Wisdom crieth without. Read. She uttereth her voice in the streets. In the way? 
in the streets. In the streets. In the streets. So that's why in Isaiah 33 verse 7, it says, Behold, their valiant ones shall cry without. Meaning what? Men that have the spirit of the Lord on them to go out there. No fear, no favor. Boots on the ground to wake up the 12 tribes of Israel. That's why it says, wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. Because who's in the streets? Our people. That's where Israel is found. You understand? Read. She cried in the chief place of concourse. Mm -hmm. The street corners. Go ahead. In the openings of the gates. In the city, she uttereth her words, saying. You see that thing? It says, she cried in the chief place of concourse. Where the majority of our people is at, that's where we're going. In the opening of the gates, the main entrances of the cities, we're going to be found in those corners, crying aloud, sparing not, lifting up our voice like a trumpet. Give me that in Isaiah 58 and 1. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 1. Read. Cry aloud. Mm -hmm. Spare not. Come on. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Pray. And show my people their transgressions. And the house of Jacob their sins. That's exactly what, that's what, that is exactly what King Solomon is saying right here. You understand? Go back to Proverbs. Okay. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 22. I mean 21. Proverbs 1 verse 21 again. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 21. Pray. He cried in the chief place of concourse. Mm -hmm. In the openings of the gates, in the city, she uttered her, vo her words saying. So wisdom is what's going to cause these men to go out. That's why we go out, we teach the gospel. Because the spirit. Okay, Proverbs 1, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 22. Read that. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 22. How long, ye simple ones, we mm -hmm. love simplicity. And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. So now, this is what wisdom, when it goes out, when the spirit of Christ, which is in the prophets, goes out, this is what we're going to teach to the people. How long, you simple ones? Will you love simplicity? Remember, the simple ones, they don't have wisdom and knowledge. Give me that in Proverbs chapter 9, verse 9. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 9. You know what? Start at verse 4. We're going to read down. Proverbs 9, verse 4. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 4. Read. Whoso is simple, let him turn, let him turn in hither. Mm -hmm. As for him that wanted understanding, she said unto him. So you see what he's saying? He says, Who, whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. Turn in hither to what? The Bible. The wisdom and the knowledge that is hidden in this book. As for him that wanted understanding, want means lack. Him that lacks understanding, she said to him. What did she say? Next verse. Come on. She said to him. Come, eat of my bread mm -hmm. and drink of the wine which I have mingled. 
You see that the bread and the wine, the bread represents the body of Christ. The wine represents the blood, the sacrifice that Christ made. Okay, come on. Meaning the understanding, you're going to receive understanding. Go ahead. Forsake the foolish mm -hmm. and live and go in the way of understanding. You see that thing right there? That's what the wisdom of the Lord will be teaching the people. The wisdom of Christ that is in, the, in, is in, in, in us, the prophets, with us, what we're going to teach the people, not our own words, but the spirit of Christ, which, we, which is in us, that's what we're going to teach the people based on what is written. You understand? Jump down to verse 9. Verse 9. Mm -hmm. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Read. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. You see what the Bible is saying? is a teacher, just man. We know what it means to be just. You are doing that which is lawful and right. Teach a just man that is doing the commandments, he will increase in learning because he understand where the wisdom of the Lord is in this book. You understand? Come on. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom mm -hmm. and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Go back to, Pro go back to Proverbs now, chapter 1. Go back to Proverbs 1, verse 22 again. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 22. Come on. How long, ye simple ones, will ye mm. love simplicity? Read. And the scorners delight in their scorning, mm. and fools hate knowledge. The fool and fools hate knowledge. That's our people today. They hate knowledge. Because guess what? They are the simple ones. And we're supposed to do what we're supposed to teach them the laws of God. So they are no longer simple, but wise. So we understand that when we go out there, we used to be in the same simplicity that our people is in. So we understand the stuff that they are doing. Now that we have the knowledge of the Lord, we are showing them there's a better way than the way that you currently are in. Because we've been there, we understand it. So guess what? It's only going to lead you to death. That's the key. You understand? Read that again, verse 22. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 22. Read. How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. You see what the Bible is saying? So the Lord is telling us that the people you are going to teach is the simple ones that love simplicity. The scorners, meaning what? The scorners is those that hate this book. You understand? And they delight in the hatred of this book. It says, and they are fools. They hate the knowledge that you're going to come with. That's what the Lord is teaching us. But guess what? We're going to teach them anyway because we want to stabilize, or stabilize our nation. We want to what? We want to bring our nation back to honor. Okay? Go back to, uh, go back to Isaiah 33 verse 7. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 7. Read. Behold, the valiant ones shall cry without. Mm -hmm. And ambassadors, the ambassadors of peace shall weep bitterly. The ambassadors of peace shall weep bitterly. We are the ambassadors of peace. And when we are weeping bitterly is because guess what? Give me that in Ecclesiastes 7 verse 7. We understand the conditions our people are in. Now that the Lord has given us the wisdom to see the things, the ills that are happening in our communities. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 7. Mm -hmm. Surely oppression make it a wise man mad. Go ahead. And a gift destroyed the heart. You see that thing? Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. And the gift destroyed the heart. Because the gift that they gave unto us in these lands is what? The lands of our captivity. They gave us slavery as a gift. You understand? They gave us slavery and oppression, colonization, slavery, forced migration. That's a gift that destroyed the heart. It destroyed our minds. Because now we've made slavery something that is, is, is a normal thing. Slavery is a normal thing now. You understand? Because we are just looking at that. I was just looking at the news this day. And I saw um, a, uh, they, they found a, 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 a newborn baby, right? Like a fetus 
That's what they call it, but it's a baby. They found a baby in the washer, washed up in a small coffin. Who threw it in there? At the black woman. Yeah. The black woman. The stuff that the black woman is doing, just these abortions they are doing, killing our sons and daughters. Listen, that's some evil stuff. The black woman has turned abortion into a sport. It's like a sporting event now. You understand? It's like they're competing on how many babies you can kill. And they don't get hold, held accountable by the government. The government has given them abortion as a gift to kill our babies. You understand? Them days are coming through. Them days are over this day. The prophets are back. Understand that? We want to make them mad as hell. Understand that thing? We are going to annoy them. You understand? We are going to annoy them. Watch this. Give me that in Isaiah 13. This is how we are going to build our nation back up. By annoying our people that do evil. Okay? Isaiah 13 verse 1. Come on. Isaiah 13 verse 1. Read. The burden of Babylon. Which Isaiah the son of Amos did see. Read. Lift ye up the banner upon the high mountain. Exhort the voice unto them. Mm -hmm. Shake the hand that they may go to the gates of the nobles. You see that thing right there? It says, Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. What is the banner? The banner is the Bible. Give me that in Isaiah 62, verse 10. The banner is the Bible. The Lord is saying, Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. The great governments on earth, we must lift up the banner. We must lift up the Bible and burn up all the lies that they are shoving down our people's throats. Read that. Okay. Isaiah 62, verse 10. We are, Isaiah going, to chapter them, we are going to piss them. So we're going to piss them off so much. Guess what they're going to do? They're going to, they're going to say, we don't, they, don't, they don't want to see us on the streets. Guess what? They'd be wrong about that thing. We ain't going nowhere. We are going to annoy them until the Lord returns. Read what you got. Isaiah 62 verse 10. Read that. Isaiah chapter 62 verse 10. Read. Go through. Go through the gates. Mm -hmm. Prepare ye a way for the people. Prepare Read. ye a way of the people. Come on. Cast up. Cast up the highway. Gather out the stones. Mm -hmm. Lift up a standard for the people. You see that thing? It says, lift up a standard for the people. The Bible. The Bible is the standard. The Bible is the banner that the Lord says, lift it up and teach them my word. Whether they like it or not, you must bring this book out. And they must know what is written in this book before my son returns. That's what the Lord is commanding us this day. You understand? That we must do it. Watch this. Give me, um, go back to where was it? You know what? Start jump up to verse six. Hmm. Maybe I want to hear that. Jump up to verse six. Read verse six. Isaiah chapter sixty-two, verse six. Go ahead. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O hmm. Jerusalem, Read. which shall never hold thee a peace, day nor night. You see that thing? We shall never hold our peace, day nor night. Go ahead. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. The most High God says, listen, you make mention of my word, you make mention of me, guess what? He says, keep not silent. Teach them my word, whether they want to hear it or not. That's how we are going to rebuild our nation back up. Okay, come on. And give, and give him no rest. Don't give him no rest. Give the most high God no rest until he established Jerusalem as a praise in the earth. The watchmen are going to go out and annoy the people. We're going to spoil their fun. That's our job this day. Go ahead. And give him no rest till mm -hmm. he establish. Come on. Until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Until the Lord make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Right now, Jerusalem is not a praise in the earth. Jerusalem is not a praise in the earth. That's why wisdom and knowledge is going to build and restore our decayed state to that honorable state. And until such time that happens, we are not going to keep silence. 
We're going to annoy the people as hell with this Bible until they repent and come back to this Bible and do what it says. That's what the Most High God is commanding us to do. Go back to Isaiah 13, verse 2. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. Read. Exalt the voice unto them. Come on. Shake the hand mm -hmm. that they may go into the gate of the nobles. He says what? Lift up the banner, which is the Bible. He says, exalt the voice unto them. You understand? We read that in Isaiah 58. Shake the hand. Correct them. Correct them. You understand? That's when you're shaking the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. They are going to go and what? They are going to tell on us. They are going to speak to the higher ups that these people right here, they are causing problems because they are always with that Bible thing. You know, they just be judging the people. Shut the hell up. We're going to teach the Bible. Watch this. Give me that in uh, X chapter 17. Okay. You know what? Mm, I'll deal with X later on. I'll deal with X later on. But what I'm showing you is, is they're going to go into the gates of the noble because they're going to be mad as hell. I remember one time we was teaching, the Jehovah's Witnesses used to teach in Thessalonica, okay? And I mean, I was teaching right there. This, this is the time when, you know, everybody had left in the camp. So I'm over there, I'm teaching, blasting them as hell. You understand? It got so bad that there was a sister because they were handing out those comic books. You understand? At the end, they were flooded. They were... I mean, there were like maybe 20 of them in Midrand at that day, on that day. It was a lot of them. And that was, it was around, uh, I'd say, 11 o'clock-ish. You understand? So now there's a sister sitting across. She's sitting on a bench. She's getting banned by what's coming out. She went and called the police. Okay? She mm -hmm. first called. She picked up the phone. She called. And then after that, she went to the security guard. And I see some van, I think this was some police van started to move around. But she was calling them. She was loud, pointing at me and saying, what was she saying? I don't remember what she said, but she was just mumbling things. You understand? Until the Jehovah's Witnesses packed up and they left. All 20 of them, they packed up and they, they, you know, they kicked rocks. They left. And the gospel of Christ continued. You understand? So that's exactly what the people are going to do. We're going to piss them off with this Bible. Watch this. Give me, go back to Isaiah. Go back to Isaiah 33. Let me calm down. Isaiah chapter 33, verse 7. Okay, watch this. Isaiah chapter 33, verse 7. Behold, their valiant ones shall cry without. Mm -hmm. The ambassadors of peace shall weep bitterly. We're going to go to the streets and weep bitterly. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to teach the Bible the way that is written and annoy the people and compel them to come in. Watch this. Give me the book of Wisdom of Solomon 7. Wisdom of Solomon 7 verse 22. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7 verse 22. Read. For wisdom, which is the worker of all things, taught me. For in her is an understanding spirit, mm -hmm. holy, one only, manifold, subtle, lively, clear, undefiled, plain, not subject to hurt, loving the thing that is good, quick, which cannot be letted, ready to do good. Now stop right there. Watch this. This is some, there's a lot of stuff in this verse. Okay. Now read the verse again. Read the top, the top of that verse. I just want to deal with that with that first. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 22. Come on. For wisdom, which is the worker of all things, taught me. Stop right there. It says, For wisdom, which is the worker of all things, taught me. The spirit of Christ which is in us is what's going to teach us to understand what this Bible is saying and to inspire us to go out there and wake our people up. So it says, wisdom, which is the worker of all things, taught me. Jump down to verse 24. Verse 24. Mm -hmm. 
for wisdom is more moving than any motion. Go ahead. She passes it and goes through all things by reason of her pureness. Now stop right there. It says, for wisdom, which is the worker of all things, taught me. The same wisdom, it says, is more moving than any motion. Wisdom is a movement. You understand? Wisdom is how we are going to restore our nation back to that honorable state. Guess what? In order for that to happen, the spirit of the Lord that which is in us is going to move us to do these things, to go to the streets, to go to different places to teach the gospel. The spirit of the Lord is what's going to inspire us to do that. Because wisdom is a movement in itself. That's how we're going to restore the decayed state of our people and restore their sanctuary back to the way that it was. To defend this Bible. Read that again, verse 24. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 24. For wisdom is more moving than any motion. Come on. She passeth and goeth through all things by reason of your pureness. So wisdom is more moving than any motion. I want to deal with that thing. Wisdom is more moving than any motion. Wisdom is a movement. You understand? And a movement is progressive. When it comes to the Mosai, if that movement is by the Lord, guess what? There's going to be progress. There's going to be growth. There's going to be conversion back to the laws of God. You understand? That's why it says, for wisdom is more moving than any motion. All the movements, all the revolutionaries that have ever been on this earth, none of them come close to the movement that comes with this book. The Bible is a book of revolution. The Bible is a book of insurrection. The Bible is a book to destroy the kingdoms that are ruling on this earth. Understand that. Read that again. Verse 24. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 24. Read. For wisdom is more moving than any motion. Mm -hmm. She passes and goes through all things by reason of her pureness. By reason of her pureness. Jump back up to verse 22. Watch this. Read verse 22 again. Verse 22. Mm -hmm. For wisdom, which is the worker of all things, taught me. Read. For in her is an understanding spirit. Watch this. The spirit of Holy. Christ, which is, hold on. The spirit of Christ is going to, is what? Is the spirit of understanding. The spirit of Christ is the spirit of understanding because that's why it says wisdom is more is the work of all with the work of all things taught me for in her is an understanding spirit. The spirit of Christ will give you understanding. That's what King Solomon is teaching us here. You understand? Read to understand what you need to do. You're going to understand the mission. You're going to understand how to execute that mission. You're going to understand where to go and how to set up what to teach, how to teach the people in those areas that you go and teach the gospel. The spirit of the Lord will teach you all that. You understand? Read. For in her is an understanding spirit. Mm -hmm. Holy. One only. Manifold. Manifold subtle. means infinite. Hold on. Manifold, manifold means is, is what? Is, is many. Is numerous. Is infinite. Unmeasurable. That's the wisdom of the Lord. You understand? It's manifold. Go ahead. Manifold. Mm -hmm. Subtle. Subtle. Lively. Mm -hmm. Clear. Undefiled. Plain. Not subject to hurt. Come on. Loving the thing that is good. Mm -hmm. Quick, which cannot be littered. Ready to do good. You see what you see that part right there? It says, which cannot be lettered, ready to do good, which cannot be stopped, ready to do good. What is the good that we're doing? Restoring our nation to back to honor. That's the good that is doing. Give me that in Nehemiah 2, verse 10. Restoring our nation back to honor. And our enemies, they are going to be mad as hell. Read that. Nehemiah 2, verse 10. Okay. You know what? Give me Nehemiah. Give me Nehemiah 9, 27 first. Then we're going to go to chapter 2, verse 10. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 27. Go ahead. Therefore, thou deliverest them into the hand of their enemies mm -hmm. who vexed them 
And in the time of their trouble, when they cried unto thee, thou heardest them from heaven. And according to thy manifold mercies, thou gave them saviors who saved them out of the hand of their enemies. You see what the Lord, would, what the Lord does in every captivity? He always sends saviors. He's always sending saviors, the watchmen. You understand? And these watchmen will teach you day and night. You understand? They will teach you day and night to do what? To come out of the evils that you are in to repent and keep God's commandments. So these saviors, you know what they will do? When they come to save the people, to teach the people the laws of God, guess what's going to happen? Give me that in Nehemiah 2 verse 10. Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 10. Mm -hmm. When Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the servant, the Ammonite, heard of it, it grieved them exceedingly that there was come a man to seek the welfare of the children of Israel. You see that thing? When we go out there to teach our people the laws of God, brothers, understand what our, how our enemies experience this thing. It grieves them exceedingly that now we are out there teaching our people the truth of the Bible and the truth of who they are. Our enemies become mad as hell. And when they are mad as hell, guess what they will do? They will go to the gates of the nobles to tell on us so that they can stop this thing. We just read in Wisdom of Solomon, it says, it cannot be let it. It's always ready to do good. It cannot be stopped. No matter how many times they're going to try to stop us, they are not going to stop this thing. The mission is a go. Understand that thing, okay? Watch this. Read that again, verse 10. Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 10. Mm -hmm. When Sanvalat the Horonite and Tobiah the servant, the Ammonite, heard of it, it grieved them exceedingly that there was come a man to seek mm -hmm. the welfare of the children of Israel. Because these nations understand what we're doing. They understand that what we're doing, this is a movement. And this movement is not political. This movement is not religious. No, this movement is about restoration of the 12 tribes of Israel back on the earth as the rulers of the earth. They understand that. And they understand what it means for them. They understand their time of rulership is over because we're waking up. That's what they think. That's how they look at it because that's how it is. Give me that in First Esdras. You know what I'm saying? Give me First Esdras 2.28. First Esther 2.28. Let me show you how they really feel about us when we go out there to wake our people up. You might not see it, but it is going out and they feel it. Understand that. First Esther 2.28. Read that. First Esther chapter 2 verse 28. Come on. Now therefore, I have commanded to hinder those men from building the city. This is how the heathens, they, that's how they think. They, the way they think is to hinder us from building our, our nation back up, restoring our decayed, the decayed state of our nation. You understand? So they want to hinder us from building. Read. And heed to be taken that there be no more done in it. You see what he's saying? It says heed, meaning caution must be taken because we are building that great city, the city of Jerusalem. Read. And that those wicked workers proceed no further to the annoyance of kings. To the what? To the annoyance of kings. To the what? To the annoyance of kings. That's how they feel. We annoy them. We annoy them. Understand that. It says, and that those wicked workers... How can we be, so we are wicked workers because we are raising our nation back up? How can that be a wicked thing? You see that thing? It says they call us wicked workers because we want to restore the welfare of the children of Israel. We want to what? We want to restore the decay, the state of our people. They say they, that's how they look at us. They say we are wicked workers. You see that? Because why? We annoy them. He says, to the annoyance of kings. He didn't say some Tom, Dick, and Harry on the streets. No. The annoyance of kings, meaning the powers that be, they get annoyed with us. Understand that. That's why I said that they may go into the gate of the nobles. And that includes our people too. 
You understand? That includes our people that hate us when we go out. They also, they are annoyed. So they go into the gates of the nobles to what? To, to so that they can, they can, in, they can um, uh, pass some kind of an executive order to stop us from doing this. They can't. That's why it says it cannot be stopped. It cannot be let it. Because what? Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times. And that wisdom is a movement. They cannot stop that thing. They will not be able to stop us. Understand it. Okay. Go back to where it was at. Nehemiah 2 verse 10. Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 10. Read. When Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the servant, the Ammonite, heard mm. of it, it grieved them exceedingly that there was come a man to seek the welfare of the children of Israel. You see that thing? So now guess what? When we do that, it becomes an annoyance to them. Watch this. Give me the book of Sirach, chapter 34. Okay, Ecclesiasticus, 34, verse 8. You know what? Start at verse, start at verse 9. Sirach 34, verse 9. Why did I write 8? Sirach 34, verse 9. Read that. Ecclesiastes, chapter 34, verse 9. Come on. A man that hath traveled knoweth many things. Mm -hmm. And he that hath much experience will declare wisdom. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, a man that hath traveled knoweth many things. And he that hath much experience will declare wisdom. So guess what? That's why it's very important to go to move to different places in the country to do what? To teach our people the laws of God. Because you get to understand the spirit that exists in that area. And you're not going to know. The Lord will guide you where to go in the Bible to what? To revive their spirits. You understand? The most high God is that the wisdom of the Lord is what we, that is in us will inspire you to know exactly what you, you should teach. You understand? Read. He that hath no experience knows little. Read. But he that hath traveled is full of prudence. You see that thing? It says, he, but he that hath no experience, he knows nothing. He knows very little. But he that traveled, he that hath traveled is full of prudence, full of wisdom. You understand? Like we read in verse 9. Keep, keep going. Verse 11, read. When I traveled, I saw many things. Mm -hmm. And I understand more than I can express. You see what he's saying? He says, and I understand more than I can express. Come on. I was oft times in danger of death, mm. yet I was delivered because of these things. He says he was delivered because of these things. What things? The, the experience that he got from traveling, the experience that he got from seeing all these things that he experienced in his journeys, going from city to city to understand what is, the, what is in the mindset of the people, what to teach them, how to restore them back to this Bible. You understand? So now, watch this. Give me the book. Give me the book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 1. Give me Acts 17, verse 1. He says, a man that has traveled knoweth many things. You understand? Why? Because the, in order for this man to travel, the wisdom of the Lord is the one that is inspiring him to do, to go to all these different places. What? To teach the gospel. You understand? Watch this. Acts 17, verse 1. Acts of the 17, verse 1. Read. Now, when they had passed through Amphipolis mm -hmm. and, Apoll and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue what? of the Jews. They came to Thessalonica, where, they, where was a synagogue of the Jews. So now, this is the Apostle Paul. He's coming, he's what? He's in Thessalonica now. He came, he says, they came to Thessalonica, where was a synagogue of the Jews. What was the Apostle Paul doing? He was traveling. To do what? To teach the gospel. Go ahead. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, mm -hmm. and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. He did what? And three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. And three Sabbath days he reasoned with them out of the scriptures. 
That's what we are doing. We are following after the footsteps of our forefathers. Come on. Opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again and risen again from the dead and that his and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. So that's what we teach our people that Christ died and resurrected. He died for your sins and he's a black man that died for you. So guess what? You must repent and come back to this book. You understand? When we go out there, we teach them the, 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 the biblical Messiah as it is written. That's why it says, that's why he, that's why he says that he says, and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ according to the scriptures. You understand? Jump down to verse 10. Watch this. The Apostle Paul is at Thessalonica at this point. Watch the next. Watch, watch this now. Read verse 10. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea. Unto what? Unto Berea. Now they are going to another city to do what? To teach the gospel. Go ahead. Who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. So in Berea, there was, this, there was a synagogue of the Jews. The Israelites was there as well. The apostle Paul and Silas, they went over there to teach, to teach the brethren. You understand? Come on. Verse 11. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica. You see that thing? Thessalonica always had problems. You understand? The people did not believe. They did not receive the word with all readiness of mind. Go ahead. In that they received the word with all readiness of mind. You see that thing? But the Thessalonians, they did not receive it with all readiness of mind. Read. And search the scriptures daily, mm -hmm. whether those things were so. Go ahead. Therefore, many of them believed. Also of honorable women, which were, which were Greeks, and of men, not a few. You see, there were honorable women which believed also. They believed what the Apostle Paul was teaching and Silas. And guess what? They searched the scriptures daily to, to see whether those things that they were teaching was true. They are in Berea at this point. Go ahead. Verse 13. But when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was preached of Paul at Berea, they came to the also and stirred up the people. You can make this stuff up. You cannot make this stuff up. They followed the Apostle Paul because they heard that the people, they were ready to re they, they receive the word with all readiness. When they got to Berea, guess what they did? He says they came thither also and stirred up the people. Meaning what? To stop the people from hearing the word. Evil Negroes. You understand? Now read verse 15. Come on. We see it all verse the time 15. when we travel. We see it all the time when we travel. There'll be just what that one brother, that one sister who doesn't want the people to hear the word. He just be disturbing the listeners. You understand? Stirring up the people to go against what is written. Verse 15. Come on. Verse 15. Read. And they that conducted Paul brought him unto, uh, brought him unto Athens mm -hmm. and receiving a commandment unto Silas and Timotheus for to come to him with all speed. They departed. So now the Apostle Paul is, unto, is in Athens now. He is traveling. He doesn't get time to play. He's doing the work. Okay, come on. Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was, stored, was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. So when he saw the people that were worshiping idols, his spirit was stirred in him. So guess what he did? He taught them the laws of God. Keep going. Verse 17. Come on. Verse 17. Mm -hmm. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. You see that? And in the market daily with them that met with him. So he went to where the people were. The street corners, you know, the street vendors, he taught them. Listen, you must repent. Keep the commandments. And so forth. You understand? Because the people were given to idolatry. Worshipping of idols. You understand? That's what, that's what you are seeing today. 
You go to Midrand, you go to Jovek, wherever, you'll be seeing black men with, uh, with, 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 with bones on the floor. Talk about they want to prophesy. The hell is this? Given to idolatry. You understand? Trusting in chicken wings and stuff like that. Watch this. Give me the book of Acts, chapter 18, verse 1. Acts chapter 18, verse 1. Read. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth. You see that thing? He left Athens. You understand? Now he's in Corinth. The apostle Paul is traveling. You understand? Read. And found a certain Jew named Aquila, mm -hmm. born in Pontus. Come on. Lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla. Mm -hmm. Because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart, to depart from Rome and came unto them. So now the Apostle Paul is at Corinth. He met uh, the Jews, Aquila and Priscilla, husband and wife. You understand? Because Claudius Caesar commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome. So now watch this. Jump down to verse 4. Okay, the Apostle Paul is at Corinth now. Read that. Verse 4. Mm -hmm. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. You see what he was doing? He wasn't just going there to, to, to chill. No, he wasn't chilling. He was doing the work of the Mosai. You understand? And that's the spirit we all must have this day. Because wisdom is a movement. The spirit of the Lord is going to move you to do mighty works. Watch this. Before we get that, give me that in 2 Peter 1.21. Okay, 2 Peter 1.21. We coming back here. Second Peter chapter one, verse twenty one. Watch this. Second Peter chapter one, verse twenty one. Mm -hmm. For prophecy, for prophecy came not no, in no, all no. time. For the for that prophecy, for the prophecy. Come on. Second Peter chapter one, verse twenty one. Wait. For the prophecy came not in all time by the will of man. Mm -hmm. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. You see that part right there? It says they spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Because guess what? The Holy Ghost is the spirit of the Lord. It's a movement. The Holy Ghost is the wisdom of the Lord. That's a movement right there. Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9. Okay? Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 17. Watch this. We're going to read 17 and 18. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 17. Read. And thy counsel, who hath known, mm. except thou give wisdom. You see that thing? And send. Hold on. And thy counsel, who hath known. Who has known the counsel of the Lord except thou give wisdom? You're not going to know the counsel of the Lord if you don't receive the wisdom of the Lord by keeping his commandments. Read. And send thy Holy Spirit from above. You see where it comes from? From above, where the Lord is. You understand? And send thy Holy Spirit from above. What will the Holy Spirit do when he's sent from above? Next verse. Go ahead. Verse 18. Come on. For so the ways of them which lived on the earth were reformed. You see that thing? It says, so the way, it says, for because so the ways of them which lived on the earth were reformed, meaning they were changed. They repented because of what? Because of the Holy Spirit, the movement of the Most High God. Wisdom is a movement, it will cause the people to be reformed. Go ahead. And men were taught the things. That are pleasing unto thee. Mm -hmm. Is and were saved. Were Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. And men were taught the things that were pleasing unto the Lord. What are the things that are pleasing unto the Lord? Give me that in Isaiah 42, 22. Isaiah 42, 21. Read that. And men were taught the things that were pleasing unto the Most High. They, as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. If they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Like we read in 2 Peter. But a holy man of God... It made a holy men of God speak as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. You see, you see, mm, you know what? What did I say, God? Isaiah 42, 21, sir. 
Read that, read that. There's somewhere I want to go. Hmm. Read that. Isaiah 42, 21. The book of Isaiah, chapter 42, verse 21. Go ahead. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. Mm -hmm. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. The, the Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. So go back to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 18. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 18. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. You understand? Watch this. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 18. Come on. For so the ways of them which lived on the earth were reformed. Mm -hmm. And men were taught the things that are pleasing unto thee. Stop right there. And men were taught the things that were pleasing unto the Lord. What are those things? The righteousness of the Lord. That was pleasing unto the Lord. When we teach God's commandments to our people, guess what? The Most High God is pleased with that. I want to show you something before we finish this verse. Go back to 2 Peter 1, 21. Hmm. Watch this. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 21. Come on. For the, prophe for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. Stop right there. Is that the prophecy came not in all time by the will of man. So when you see today, when you see, because remember, the prof a prophecy is by prophets, right? When you look at, when you look at, I'm just going to deal with politics. When you look at our, our brothers and sisters in politics, right? Guess what? They, they, they are false prophets because they are, they, are, they are promising our people lies, pipe dreams, right? So now they are moving by the will of man, not by the will of the Lord, by the will of man. That's why they have manifestos. You understand? And whose will are they moving? Who's, which man's will are they moving in? They will, they're moving in the will of the white man. That's the will of the white man. Politics is the will of the white man. Politics is the will of the white man. So, who Julius Malem, who Cyril Ramaphosa, who's, who else? Boom. Mm, what's this? Boom, Musi Maimani. You understand? Boom, Boom, Hemen Mashaba. You understand? Boom, uh, who, who, there's another one. Is it Patricia Delil? I think she started a political party also, calling the Good Party, something like that. Here's another one, Gay Gaten McKenzie. He also started a political party. What's the name of it? The pet, what? Patriotic Alliance, something like that, PA or something like that. So that's the will of the white man because politics is a Greek religion. You understand? Politics is a Greek religion. So they are, move, they are moving with the will of man. So that's why their movement, it go on, it, it go but for so long and it, it doesn't go, it just, it just dies out. It doesn't make any impact any meaningful impact to uplift the mindset of our people. No. So read that again, verse 21. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 21. For the prophecy came not in all time by the will of man, mm -hmm. but holy men of God Stop speak like as... But, but what? But holy men of God. That's what differentiates us from them. He says, but holy men of God. You see that thing? You see the difference? This is what differentiates it. That, that's the difference between us and them. Because guess what? We are holy men of God. We keep God's commandments. You understand? We understand that politics is not the way. Democracy is not the way. Religion is not the way. God's laws is the way to come out of this oppression. You understand? He says, but what? Read that part again. But holy men of God mm -hmm. speak as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So the reason why we, we, the, when, we, when we open our mouth, we open our mouth because we are moved by the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Christ, which is in us. That's why it says it cannot be let it, it cannot be stopped. Because we are holy men of God and we are moved by the Spirit of the Lord. Not by politics, not by the will of the white man which is politics, not by the will of the white man, which is democracy. No. But what? As they were moved by the Holy Ghost. That's some heavy stuff right there. 
Okay? Now, go back to Wisdom of Solomon 9, verse 18 now. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 18. Mm -hmm. For so the ways of them which lived on the earth were reformed, and men were taught the things that are pleasing unto thee. Come on. And were saved through and were saved through wisdom. No, they were saved through politics. And were saved through wisdom. No, through voting. Through wisdom. They were saved through. I want you to read the right, the right words here. And they were what? And were saved through wisdom. And were saved through wisdom. Wisdom is how we are going to be delivered. Wisdom is how we are going to be delivered. Not politics. Not religion. Not Christianity. Not democracy. Mm -mm. Wisdom is how we are going to be saved. Wisdom is how we are going to be delivered from oppression. That's what the Lord is teaching us right there. Because guess what? The people changed. The people were taught. Because the reason why the people were reformed is because the people were taught the things that were pleasing unto the Lord and were saved through wisdom. The reason why you see all these political parties and all of that, they, 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 the so-called leaders of those political parties, none of them, they never require the people to change. That's what King Solomon is teaching us here. It says, for, for so the ways of them which lived on the earth were reformed. In those political parties, our people don't get reformed. And men were taught the things that were pleasing unto thee. And the people in those political parties, they are not taught the things that are pleasing unto the Lord. So therefore, the people don't change. The people still remain the same. And guess what? They are not going to be delivered. But when we go through the things that the Lord is commanding us to do, he says we are going to be saved through the wisdom that is going to be taught to us so we can change our lives. The movement of God is about change. The movement of God is about reformation. The movement of God is about what? Changing your mindset through the laws of God. That's how you're going to grow. That's how you get delivered. Understand that thing. You understand? That's why the Apostle Paul was going to all these different places and he saw different problems that these different places where our people were is experiencing. And guess what? He taught the people according to the problems that we're experiencing in those areas. Understand that? Okay, watch this. Go back to Acts chapter 18. Acts 18 verse 2 again. Read what you got. Okay. The apostle Paul is still at Corinth at this point. He left Athens. Now we were in Corinth. Start at verse 1. Read that. Acts chapter 18 verse 1. Come on. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth. So the apostle Paul now is at Corinth. Come on. And found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, Read. lately come from Italy come with on. his wife Priscilla. Mm -hmm. Because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to, to depart from Rome. So now and jump came down to verse 4 them. now. Read verse 4 now. So now the Apostle Paul is at Corinth. He's found, he, he found the Jews that were kicked out of Rome by Claudius Caesar. Now we are at, read verse 4 now. Watch this. Verse 4. Mm -hmm. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath. Come on. And persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. The Greeks were the Israelites that were living under Greek customs. They were raised in Greek customs. Read. Right? And when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, mm -hmm. Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. So you, because you, you, you will ask yourself, why, 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 why is this key? Why, why is Luke keep mentioning this thing? It says that he, what he says, he testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. So who, what was he teaching? He was teaching the biblical Christ. He was teaching Christ of the Bible. You understand? Remember, this is during the time of Rome. Remember when you read 2 Thessalonians, it says the, the mystery of iniquity was already at work. Who was the, who's the mystery of iniquity? The white man. You understand? So he kept, he kept, it, what we're reading, we keep reading, it says, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. That, why do you think all the time we keep bringing up what Christ looks like. It's all spiritual. It's all spirit. It's all a repeat of what we did in the past during the time of Rome, the Acts of the Apostles. 
We keep reading what Christ looks like. Why? Because you might think that's, that's a small thing. No, no, no. That's not a small thing. That's a big thing. You understand? It changes the whole mindset of, the, of our people. Okay, come on. Jump down to verse 8. Verse 8. Mm -hmm. And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house. Really? And many of the Corinthians... Many of the what? And many of the Corinthians... Many of hearing, the Corinthians... Many of the Corinthians... You see what they were called, the Jews in Corinth? They were called the Corinthians. Read that again, verse 8. Acts chapter 18, verse 8. Read. And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed in the Lord with all his house. Mm -hmm. And many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed, and were baptized. Meaning what? They, 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 they kept the laws of God. That's why it says, they believed and were baptized. They kept the commandments of the Most High. Read on. Excuse me. Then speak the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. Mm. Be not afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace. You see what? You see that thing right there? That's a beautiful thing right there. Read verse 9 again. Because a lot of the times you go into a city, right? And listen, it's new territory. You've never been there before. You're wondering what type of people they are in this place, right? But look at what Christ is comforting the Apostle Paul here. Read verse 9 again. Acts chapter 18, verse 9. Come on. Then speak the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. Mm -hmm. Be not afraid. Be not but afraid. Speak. Yeah. Hold on. Be not afraid, Paul. Don't be afraid. Be not afraid. Go ahead. But what? But speak. But teach. But teach. But teach. Go ahead. And hold not thy peace. Don't hold back. He's saying don't hold back, meaning spare not. Don't hold back. That's what he said right there. Go ahead. For I am with thee. Because I'm with and you. And no Let man. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. It says, for I am with you because I'm with you. Brothers, the Lord is with us. Wherever we may go. Let's say they say, no, that city is full of gangsterism. It's full of thugs. We go, right? That's the place we're going. Because they are, the Lord is saying, for I'm with you. You understand? Come on. For I am with thee, mm -hmm. and no man shall sit on thee to hurt thee. You see that thing? Because no man and no man shall sit on thee to hurt thee. Nobody going to do nothing to you. Nobody going to hurt you. I got you. Go ahead. For I have much people in this city. Could you imagine that? The most high God always has people set up that you don't even know. When we go into different cities to teach the Bible, the Lord already has people set up that if them, something pop off, the most are going to activate the spirits of those men to do what? To shut that thing down so we can continue to teach. Understand that? The, you see what Christ is saying? He says, for I have much people in this city. So wherever city we're going into, don't get it twisted. You might think, oh, we don't know nobody here. The Lord has already had people set up. He will activate their spirit if something pop up so the gospel can go out. So be not afraid. You understand? Watch this. Jump down to verse 18 now. Okay, read 18 and 19 together. Acts chapter 18, verse 18. Go ahead. And Paul, after this, tarried, tarried there yet a good while. And then took his leave for, of the brethren and sailed thence into Syria. Mm -hmm. And with him, Priscilla and Aquila, having shorn his head in Centria, for he had a vow. He had the vow of the Nazarite, if you read Acts 21. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now he left Corinth. Now he goes to Antioch. Okay. He is traveling with Priscilla and Aquila. Go ahead. Watch this. From Antioch, listen to look at where he goes. Keep going. And he came to Ephesus. He did what? And he came to Ephesus. He came to Ephesus. So from Corinth, he was coming from Athens. Now he goes to he goes where he goes to Antioch. He goes to Antioch. From Antioch, he will, he goes to what to Ephesus. 
You understand? Come on. And he came to Ephesus and left them there. Mm -hmm. But he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. I want to show you the mindset of the Apostle Paul. The mindset of the Apostle Paul was about the mission, teaching the gospel of Christ. It says what? He says he came to, he came to Ephesus and left them there. But he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. He taught the gospel. He taught them about Christ. That's what he was doing. You understand? Watch this. Acts chapter 19 verse 1. Acts chapter 19 verse 1. Come on. And it came to pass that mm -hmm. while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. Now remember, the apostle Paul is at Ephesus. Go ahead. He said unto them, mm -hmm. he said unto them, have you received the Holy? Have you received the Holy Ghost since he believed? And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Because in Ephesus, they didn't know about that. You understand? They were still what? They were still going. They were still, they were still under the water baptism that John the Baptist was doing. You understand? The apostle Paul was coming, he was baptizing them in the, in the Holy Ghost. He was teaching them about Christ. That there's no need for you to be dipped in water anymore. Now you must be taught, they must be washed with the word. That's what he was doing. They only knew John's baptism. The apostle Paul was going to teach them about Christ's baptism, which is to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. You understand? So now what Paul, the apostle Paul was doing at Ephesus, he was teaching them the true baptism of Christ. You understand? And there were problems at Ephesus because they were worshiping Diana of the Ephesians. Okay? Jump down to verse 13. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them, which had evil spirits, the name of the Lord Jesus, the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, we adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preached. So now they are saying, listen, they, you, see, you see, they are finding those brothers, these vagabond Jews, scattered Israelites. You understand? It says there were some were exorcists. So now it says they took upon to call over them which had evil spirits, the name of the Lord Jesus. They were, meaning what? They were doing what the apostle Paul was doing, saying, we adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preached. You see what they are trying to do? They are trying to get rid of the evil spirit out of that out of the out of the scattered israel those vagabond jews watch what happens next keep going and there were seven sons of one siva siva a mm. jew mm. and chief of the priests which did so so there was siva you know he was a chief priest so what was he doing he was trying to take as the evil spirit out of the man watch what happens Listen to what the evil spirit says in that man. Read that. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, mm -hmm. and Paul I know, but who are ye? Now hold on a second. I want to show you some, some heavy stuff right here. Read verse 15 again. Acts chapter 19 verse 15. Go ahead. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, mm -hmm. and Paul I know. But who are ye? I want to show you something heavy about this verse. There's something heavy about this verse. You see what the evil spirit is saying? It says what? Jesus I know. Christ I know. And Paul I know. But who are ye? You know what this goes into? You know when you, you brothers now, I'm going into the brothers now. When you teach, you understand? And it seems like uh, the person is not really getting it like that. You understand? Or they are undermining you as you teach. Well, that's the same thing we're reading here. You see the evil spirit said, it says, Jesus I know. Paul I know. But who are you? Because the people that you are teaching, you see physical bodies, but these are spirits. If you don't believe this, they can tell that you don't believe it. They can tell. That's why he says, I know these, I know, I know Christ. I know this brother. But who are you? What is that letting, what is this letting you know? It's letting you know 
these evil spirits that are in the, the brothers and sisters that we teach, they know who we are. They do. They know who we are. They know who we are. Understand that thing. It doesn't matter even if you go to a foreign land, you've never been there before. These spirits, they are recycled. They jump from one person to another. They know who we are. Understand that. So don't get it twisted. They fully understand. So don't be faking the funk. Okay? Watch this. Keep going. Read verse 16. Verse 16. And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. You see what they fled? Because says, I don't know you. I know Christ. I know Paul, but I don't know, I don't know you. Meaning what? I'm not going to submit. That's what the evil spirit is saying. You see that thing? The evil spirit is saying, I don't know you, so I'm not going to submit. I'm not going to listen to what you say because you don't believe it. That's some heavy stuff right there. Keep going. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling mm -hmm. at Ephesus. And fear fell on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. Go ahead. And many, and many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. So now what you want to see is that um, there's two things going on here. So the evil spirit, it says the evil spirit is, and the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. The evil spirit jumped out. But the thing is, before it jumped out, you see what the evil spirit was doing? Was trying to intimidate these brothers right here. You understand? So that's why when you brothers, when you teach, don't be afraid. Okay, don't be scared. Okay, read verse 19. I mean, read verse 18. Verse 18. Mm -hmm. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Great. Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men. Right. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So those that were using curious arts, meaning witchcraft, idolatry, is as they banned those books that they were using for witchcraft, meaning they repented. You understand? They repented. Give me the book of Acts chapter 20, verse 1. Acts 20, verse 1. Acts chapter 20, verse 1. Go ahead. And after the uproar was seized, Paul called unto him the disciples and embraced them and departed for to go into Macedonia. So now he left Ephesus. Now he's coming to what? Macedonia. He said, let's go to Macedonia now. You understand? And teach the, our brothers and sisters over there. Go ahead. And when he had gone over those parts, and had given them much exhortation, he came into Greece. He came into Greece. You see, he went over. He gave them exhortation. You understand? He taught them the gospel of Christ. You understand? He says he came into Greece. Keep going. And there, about three months, and when the Jews laid wait for him, as he was about to sail into Syria, he purposed to return through Macedonia. He says, I'm going to go back through Macedonia again. You understand? Because the brethren wanted to see him. So what I'm showing is the apostle Paul was traveling a lot. He was doing a lot of work because he wanted to push the gospel. to. He wanted the gospel to go out. You understand? Acts 21 verse 1. Acts 21 verse 1. Read. And it came to pass that after we were gotten from them and had launched we came with a straight course into the course and the day following unto Rhodes and from thence unto Petra. So now these are the cities of Tyre. Go ahead. And finding a ship sailing over into Phoenicia, Phoenicia we went abroad. Phoenicia, that's Phoenicia. You understand? That's Tyre. Phoenicia. Go ahead. 
We went abroad and set forth. We went abroad and set forth. Go ahead, verse 3. Read. Verse 3. Now when we had discovered Cyprus, we left it on the left hand and sailed into Syria and landed at Tyre. Mm -hmm. for, for, the, for there, the ship was, uh, was to unlade her burden. Okay, now watch this. So now I'm trying showing you that the Apostle Paul wasn't sitting in one place. He was moving around. The Spirit moved him. You understand? Wisdom is a movement. The Spirit moved him to go to different places to teach the gospel to wake the people up. That's what we're seeing here. And guess what, brothers? That's what we are doing this day. Understand that thing. Watch this. Give me the book of Acts 21 verse 27. You know what? Jump down to verse 8. Acts 21 verse 8. Acts 21 verse 8. Mm -hmm. And the next day, we that were of Paul's company departed and came unto Caesarea. And we entered into the house of Philip, the, of Philip the evangelist, which was one of the seven, and abode with him. So now, from there, from Tyre, he went into Caesarea. Okay, watch this. Give me Acts 21, verse 27. Acts 21, verse 27. Watch this. And there are things that are going to happen in, in our journeys as we travel to different places. You understand? There are things that will happen. You understand? Being jailed and things like that. Be apprehended by the police. Because the people will go into the gates of the nobles because they'll be mad as hell. Read what you got. Acts 21, verse 27. Acts 21, verse 27. Read. And when the seven days were almost ended, mm -hmm. the Jews, which were of Asia, Asia Minor. When they... So Asia here is talking about Asia Minor. No, it's not talking about Japan. Go ahead. When they saw him in the temple, stirred up all the people and laid hands on him. You see what they did to the Apostle Paul? They laid hands on him because it's what he says, stirred up all the people and laid hands on him. Because that's how much they hated the Bible. They hated what the Apostle Paul was teaching. So don't think whenever we, when we arrive, the people who are saying, oh, all praises, the prophets are back. No. They say, oh my gosh, they are back? What the hell is this? They become mad as hell when we show up. Read. And laid hands on him, crying out, men of Israel, the man that teacheth all men everywhere against the people mm -hmm. and and the law and this place you see what they are and saying? further brought the Hold greeks on. wait 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 read that verse again read again verse 28 acts chapter 21 verse 28 read crying out men of israel help this is the man that teacheth all men everywhere against the people and the law and this place. You see what they are saying? Is that they, they cried out to the people for the people to help them to put hands, to put their hands on the Apostle Paul. You see how they are doing it? It says they cried out saying, men of Israel, help. Is there, was the Apostle Paul putting hands on people? No. He was just teaching the Bible. But you see what they, they're saying, help. As if the Apostle Paul was the one in the wrong. This is the man that teacheth all men everywhere against the people. How are we teaching against the people? We teach them, we teach sisters, keep your legs closed, open the Bible. Sisters, have some standards. Brothers, don't be marrying a hoe. Prove the sister. Know if she can cook. Not because she, just, she, know how, she knows how to make it clap. No. You must know she can cook. You understand? She's respectful. She knows she loves the Most High. She keeps the commandments of the Most High God. You must do that. So when we do that, Guess what? We, they, that's how they translate it into their head. That teacheth all men everywhere against the people. It's like we're teaching men to go against the... the we're, 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 shutting the, the we're shutting the simps. We're shutting the whoremongers. We're also exposing the holes. We're exposing the Jezebels. That's exactly what this is going into. And the law, because that's what we come with. The laws of God. And in this place, wherever we go to teach. You understand? Read. And further brought the Greeks also into the temple mm -hmm. and it polluted this holy place. 
So now imagine, they say the apostle Paul was polluting the unholy place. I'm saying unholy because it was not a holy place. It was unholy place. They said the apostle Paul was polluting it with the laws of God. And you cannot, you can't make this stuff up. It's messed up already, but when the laws of God come to set things in order, they say, no, no, you are coming to pollute us with the laws of God. But when the politician comes to campaign, the people don't say that because those politicians don't require the people to change. That's the difference between us and them. You see that thing right there? Go back to Ecclesiasticus now, okay? Chapter 34. You know what? Not Ecclesiasticus. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon 9, verse 18. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 18. Right? For so the ways of them which lived on the earth were reformed. Mm -hmm. And men were taught the things that are pleasing unto thee and were saved through mm -hmm. wisdom. And they were saved through wisdom. They were saved through wisdom. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 17. They were saved through wisdom. You know what? Jump up to verse 3. Watch this. Watch this thing, Wisdom of Solomon 6 and 3. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 6 verse 3. Mm -hmm. For power is given you of the Lord. Right. And sovereignty from the highest. You see that part right there? It says power is given you of the Lord. Not of politics. Julius Malema is not going to give you power. Sel Ramaphosa is not going to give you power. They just want to do what? They just want to go into power through your votes. That's all they care about. But it says, for power is given you of the Lord and sovereignty, meaning independence, to be an independent nation where we don't rely on no nation. We rely on ourselves. We rely on the most High God to do what? For these nations to bring their wealth unto us because it belongs to us anyway. And they belong to us. Sovereignty. Where we are an independent state. We are an independent um, nation. You understand? We are an autonomous government. That's what sovereignty means. Autonomous. Okay, come on. We get that. We can, and we, you can only get that from the Most High. You can only get that from the Most High God. Our government is not going to be run by politics. The government of the Most High God is not going to be run by politics. It's going to be run by law, judgment, and justice. A theocracy run by priests and kings. And the king of king being on top, waking at the 12 apostles and the 144,000. That's the leading body of the 12 tribes of Israel that will be established upon this earth. Go ahead. Who shall try your works mm -hmm. and search out your counsels? Who shall try your works? Who shall try your works and search out your counsels? Where's your counsels going to come from? Jump down to verse 18 now. No, no. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon 9, verse 17. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 17. Read. And thy counsel, who hath known, mm -hmm. except, thou give, except thou give wisdom, and send thy Holy Spirit from above. You see what the counsel is going to come from? From above. The Most High God is the one that will bring his wisdom down for us to make decisions on this earth. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon now. Read 6, verse 17 now. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 17. Read. For the very true beginning of her is the desire of discipline. The hair is wisdom, right? And the care of discipline is love. When you care about discipline, that's, that's what God calls it love. God calls that love. You care about discipline. 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 Go ahead. Verse 18. Mm -hmm. And love is the keeping of her laws. And love is the keeping of her laws. The hair is wisdom. Go ahead. And the giving heed unto her, and the giving heed unto her laws is as the is the assurance of incorruption. Is the, is the assurance of incorruption, the assurance of immortality, living forever, ruling forever. Go ahead. And incorruption maketh thus near unto God. You see that thing? Incorruption will make us near unto God because the laws of God will guarantee incorruption. You understand? Read. Therefore, the desire of wisdom 
bring it to a kingdom. If you desire wisdom, guess what? That's how you're going to get the kingdom. That's how you're going to rule all nations on earth. That's how you're going to receive sovereignty from the Lord, from the Most High God, like we read in verse, verse 3. Right? If your delight be then in thrones and scepters, mm -hmm. O ye kings of the people, come on, honor wisdom that ye may reign forevermore. No, honor Julius Malema. Honor wisdom mm -hmm. that ye may reign forevermore. You see that part right there? Honor wisdom that ye may reign forevermore. That's what the most High God is teaching us. You understand? Wisdom is will be the stability of our times. Because today our people, they are using politics as the stability of their time. They think politics is going to restore their nation back together. That's not going to happen. Those are just fairy tales. Watch this. I'm almost done. Give me that in Hebrews chapter 11. Look at our forefather Jacob, okay? Hebrews 11. Might be verse 21, okay? Hebrews chapter 11. Watch this. Read that. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 21. Come on. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, mm -hmm. blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning upon the top of his staff. You see that part right there? It says, Jacob, when he was a dying, he said, blessed both the sons of Joseph, that's Ephraim and Manasseh, and worshipped. He didn't vote. He doesn't say vote. He says he worshipped, leaning upon the top of his staff. He wasn't leaning on politics. He wasn't leaning on Cyril Ramaphosa or ANC or DA or Helen Zille. No, he was leaning upon the top of his staff. What was he leaning upon? What was the staff? Watch this. Give me that in, um, give me that in Proverbs. Okay, give me Proverbs. Give me Proverbs chapter three. Read Proverbs chapter three and verse, start of verse five. Proverbs 3 verse 5. Proverbs 3 verse 5. Go ahead. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Come on. And lean not unto thine own understanding. Don't lean on your own understanding. Jacob, it says he was leaning on the top of his staff. He did not lean on his own understanding. So you must lean on the Lord. That's what King Solomon is teaching us. Says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. The staff, give me that in Proverbs. Okay. Proverbs chapter, look at 22, 15. Let me hear it. Proverbs 22, verse 15. Read 29. Ooh. I'm saying, I think it's 29. Hold on. Yeah, read verse 29, 29 verse 5. Proverbs 29 verse 5. Mm -hmm. A man that flattereth his neighbor spreadeth no, no, a no. net for... Proverbs 29, 29, 29, 15. I'm sorry, 29, 15. Proverbs 29 verse 15. The rod and reproof give wisdom. Mm-hmm. But a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. Read that again. Proverbs 29, verse 15. The rod and reproof give wisdom. But a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. The rod is as the rod and reproof give wisdom. The rod, the rod, the rod and reproof give wisdom. So that rod goes into the staff. You understand? Goes into the stuff, which is this Bible. The Bible is what gives reproof and correction. Is what gives wisdom and knowledge. So that's what we're supposed to lean upon. But there's another one. Hold on a second. Go back to Proverbs 22. There's something I'm missing. Let me hear it. Proverbs 22, verse 15. Go ahead. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, mm -hmm. but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. So Proverbs 29, verse 15, and Proverbs 22, 15, they are saying the same thing. 
Watch this. Give me Psalms 23 verse 4. Okay, Psalms 23 verse 4. The book of Psalms, chapter 23, verse 4. Go ahead. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, mm -hmm. I will fear no evil. Come on. For thou art with me. Read. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So now we understand the rod, the rod is the one that gives reproof, is like a stick. You understand? To give correction. It says, Thy rod, go back to go back to Proverbs now. Read Proverbs 22, 15. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 15. Read. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. Come on. But the rod of correction shall drive it forth from him. So now the rod of correction will drive foolishness from the heart of a child. You understand? Now 29, verse 15. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 15. Go ahead. The rod and reproof give wisdom. Mm -hmm. But a child lives to himself, bringing it his mother to shame. So that's the precept. Those are precepts for the rod. The rod is a stick. Kituba. Okay, now go back to Psalms 23, verse 4. Psalms 23, verse 4. Read. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Mm -hmm. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thy rod and thy staff, thy staff, they comfort me. So the staff is something that is what it gives support. So our people, they are using politics, religion, democracy as a what? As a, as a support system. No, no, no. You must, the Bible is your support system. Because in the Bible, you're going to find wisdom. You're going to find knowledge. You're going to understand how the world is set up and why it's set up the way that it's set up. You're going to understand why you are at the bottom and what you're supposed to do to come out of the conditions that you are in. This is the true comfort. This is the true support. This is the staff that you're supposed to lean upon. You understand? Just like our forefather Jacob was doing. That was a metaphor for what? The Bible. It says, thy staff, they comfort me. Give me that in Romans 15 verse 4. Yes, sir. Romans 15, verse 4. Read that. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. Read. For whatsoever things were written aforetime, were written mm -hmm. for our learning. Come on. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. You see what gives us comfort? When it says, Thy, thy star, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The rod is used for correction. The staff is for support. So the laws of God, the scriptures, is how we are going to comfort ourselves. We comfort ourselves with the laws of God, the scriptures. The spirit of Christ is what's going to comfort us to understand what we're supposed to do to come out of these conditions. The most that God has given us the solutions. You understand? That we're supposed to lean upon. Not politics. You understand? Give me Isaiah 30, chapter 30. Isaiah 30, verse 12. Start of verse 9. Maybe I want to start there. You know what? Let's get to the point. Read verse 12. Isaiah 30 verse 12. Isaiah 30 verse 12. Come on. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, mm -hmm. because ye despise this word, and trust in oppression and perverseness, and stay thereon. You see what as a people we do? We trust in oppression. As a people, we trust in oppression. Politics is an oppressive system. Democracy is an oppressive system. Religion is an oppressive system because they teach us white Jesus, they teach us white supremacy, and they teach us to hate ourselves. But the Bible teaches us Jesus is black, Christ is a black man, God is black, and the Israelites, we are the Israelites, are black people. We are the Israelites, and we are the sons and daughters of God. The Bible is what's going to give us that comfort. You understand? But our people, they trust in oppression. That's what God is saying right there. You understand? I'm going to end the class right there. Let's break bread. Okay, let's break bread. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 23. 
First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning those body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen.